Hi and welcome to another of the screencasts for A Level PE and in today's session we're looking at group and team dynamics. So what is it that makes uh, an effective team? What makes World Cup winning teams like the 2003 rugby team for England? How is it that that, that group comes about? So first and foremost what we've got to be asking is what is a group? So a group must be an interaction between people from a class of, to be classified as a group. The group must be able to get on with each other and have a collective identity. Usually this means that they've got to have some kind of shared goals and targets. It doesn't mean you have to be best of friends, but you've got to have the same kind of values. Now, groups are normally formed through um, four different stages, but how come some groups fall apart? So, for example, France's players refused to train on a Sunday following uh, one of their team's players' expulsion. What made that group so very, very tight that they were willing to jeopardise the World Cup for their team? Okay, so let's first of all look at how uh, teams are made, or, or groups are made. And it's usually through forming, storming, norming, and then performing. They're the stages that um, are suggested that you go through. All right, so let's have a look at each one of those individually. So forming, this is where there's a lot of dependence on the leader for guidance about the values and, and the ideas behind the team. Uh, each team, team member usually still feels like an individual. Um, and then you normally go through a storming phase. So this is where group decisions are quite difficult. People are, are jostling for position. Uh, the team are trying to establish themselves and, and work out who are the leaders, who aren't. Uh, and they usually uh, develop quite a lot of conflict in this stage. After that you have the norming stage. This is where responsibilities are a bit clearer and generally accepted. Decisions are very important and increasingly made through group uh, agreements. There's a stronger sense of commitment. And then finally you get to the performing stage. It might take a while but this section is where there's a lot of focus. Um, you, you're on the achieving the goals for the group and um, it's usually through group discussion and decision. Now. What about group team performance? Uh, Steiner made a model and he suggested that group cohesion is the force that holds a group together. But you have the actual productivity, the potential productivity, and some of that is lost through faulty processes. So we're going to look at those faulty processes now. In other words, what makes a group not as effective as it should be. So let's say we've got these two rugby players. They should be able to push, let's say, 50, 50 pounds. You've got another two rugby players. We should be able to push 100 pounds in the scrum. But that's not always the case. And Ringelman found this out when he did a test run using tug of war. The more people that were involved in a group, actually the less productive they were per person. So if you had eight people there, they were significantly less productive. In other words, they weren't working as hard when they were in a group as they were if they were an individual. So if you had two people, they could maybe pull um, 80, 90% of their potential. Um, but when you had more, it equaled less. So one plus one actually equaled 1.83 as opposed to two. Now this phenomenon, this Ringelman effect, is known as social loafing where people aren't doing quite as much as they should do within uh, within the group. So let's put this into a practical. Let's say that you've got players running around trying to run a set piece. Somebody's not running quite as quick as they should do to get into position just because they can't be bothered or we'll look at the other, you know, the, maybe the reasons why. You know, so it could be in, a, in a, a rugby practice. Somebody just isn't running around the corner to support the player as quickly as you would probably like them to do. So they're just practical examples of social loafing as well as uh, the tug of war one. So you've got that dynamic group there. Now all of a sudden you've got people social loafing. So we're looking at the coordination and motivational problems here. What is it that makes that person begin to social loaf? It can't just be the fact that there's numbers there. Well it might be, but let's look at other faulty processes as well that could create motivational losses. So it might be that somebody's had a negative experience so, you know, if you've um, tried something, it's not quite worked out, you're not going to probably try as hard the next time when you, when you give it a go because obviously you've experienced failure, so you've got a negative effect to it. Might be the loss of motivation, the task is seen as too hard. You know, oh, I can't do that. So what you do is you avoid 
taking part or you try and not do as much in the group because you just don't want to put all of your efforts in there. It might be down to the low self-esteem or confidence. You know, this can result in social loafing where you're trying to protect your self-esteem. You don't put your hand up. You don't push as hard in a scrum. Uh, you know, you don't call out as much during a, during a training session because of your self-esteem. In that way, you're protecting yourself by not doing anything. It's uh, another one as well. You might feel that you're undervalued. You know, and that might be by your other teammates, or it might be by your coach. You know, if you feel like you're being watched or given the credit that you deserve, you might then not do as much. Well, the other thing is that you're feeling that others aren't trying as hard as you. Well, if, if they're not doing it, why should I? And I'm sure you know you've probably heard that over the years. All right, so that's it in a nutshell. You've got group dynamics, forming, storming, norming, performing. You've got the Ringelman effect, uh, which is your social loathing. So um, for more information on this and lots of other things on psychology, have a look at the Ashpe website.